Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here with me today. Thank you very much for joining me. It looks like they're looking towards the back of the Norris Geyser Basin where the uh, boardwalk is closed because of new activity and the water's been spraying up. Yeah, extremely hot water has been spraying up there on the boardwalk. And it looks like they have a ranger there, a park ranger answering questions and maintaining <laughs> that no one goes beyond that point. Anyways, there was a magnitude 3.4 earthquake um, not too long ago. Let me show you that. It actually came in a bit larger than what they're saying. Let me make this bigger here. You can see the seismic signature, how it really stirred up Yellowstone. This is Maple Creek. And there's the seismic signature at the bottom. It actually came in as a magnitude. Let me bring it down so you can see it better. Um, a 3.68 could even been a little bit larger than that. So I have Maple Creek here, which, yeah, it's been really increasing in activity in the uplift that's been going on on the left. Next to it is Western Boundary. Uh, yeah, that's the area that I believe where there is a crack trying to come up um, to create a dike intrusion of magma. Let me bring it over so you can see the signature here on the right. Yeah, and we'll go to the seismic signature. Look at that. Let's make that larger. That is a volcanic earthquake that only occurs when magma is coming into the system and it's recharging for another eruption. Yeah. Okay. Oh, went small on, or it's too large, so you can't see it because I enlarged it. Okay. And then let me bring it back up. That's the western boundary. Um, next to it is Mary Lake. Talked about how it sloshes around a lot at Mary Lake. This one here, second from the right, that would be the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. And let's look at its seismic signature. The, uh, yeah, same thing. The uh, borehole is up there by the fishing bridge where Yellowstone Lake empties out into the Yellowstone River. And then this one here on the far right, that is West Thumb. That's been really active too. Look at all these earlier that are marked in red. Yeah, it's been popping there. Lots of earthquakes. The ground's really brittle there. This is where they did a test um, for an emergency. Look at all that. For an earthquake swarm with uh, two hydrothermal eruptions and a tsunami. They must feel that this area probably has the greatest probability of, um, yeah, that happening. And in their scenario, their drill, um, they figured there would be loss of life and things like that. Yeah, look at all this. Okay, let me bring it back down. Yeah, each line that's marked in red is the popping of the ground where the earthquake occurred. And it sends a message to the geologist so that they know that this is happening. They do know this is happening. Now, this 3.4, which was actually a magnitude 3.6, USGS gave it an intensity level of 4. Six people sent in reports saying they did feel this earthquake. Okay, going to Google Earth. Yeah, maybe it was the people in this location. Maybe even in this house. Yeah, something like that probably would have knocked some things off the shelves. And I'll bring it out a little bit farther so you can see it in um, its location compared to Yellowstone Lake. So here's the 3.6 and down here is the Yellowstone Caldera. Now the magma chamber is slowly moving uh, northeast. So intensity level four means it was felt indoors by many people. Outdoors, they might have even felt it. 
at night. Well, it wasn't. It was just a few hours ago. They would have been woken up. Well, maybe they were taking a nap. Dishes, windows, doors would have been rattling. Uh, automobiles rocked noticeably. Not far from Billings, Montana. Here's the felt report. Okay, Columbus. Intensity level 4. One response from there. Park City. Intensity level 3. One response from there. Um, Juliet. Intensity level 3. One response. Another one from the same location. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Intensity level 3. Intensity level 3 means it was felt noticeably indoors, but not always recognized as an earthquake. Maybe they thought their washing machine was off balance or a big heavy truck passing by. Standing automobiles, uh, they would have noticed them rocking. And once again, vibration like a passing truck. This here is the only earthquake that they are reporting within the last 24 hours. But you and I both know that they have lots of earthquakes every day let me bring this over and we'll close this out and check it out okay here we have one at 1437 it shows up on two monitors this one right here which would be mary lake and then the borehole for yellowstone lake it was a very small earthquake only comes in as a magnitude 1.08 we'll go to the seismic signature right there and let's extract that. Yeah, it could very well. It's kind of a toss-up. It could be a fault movement. Because, like I said, the ground's getting really brittle. So when they have these small earthquakes, it's not flexible. And the ground just kind of pops. Or it could be, you know, let's see like that one there. That's volcanic tremor. And those are volcanic tremors. The borehole for Yellowstone Lake. This is a very deep well under the ground. Uh, probably close to about 600 feet. You can see the line of melt that it's been picking up. Yeah, melted rock. Uh, last I heard there was pockets of melted rock. Only about 600 feet underneath where people are walking. And the melt has increased there to, what was it, 30% 30, 30 maybe? Let's look at the signature. And let's extract that. See, that's volcanic tremors. We have another one they didn't report at about 1233. Uh, 1232, it shows at Maple Creek and the western boundary and Mary Lake. Let me pull this up for you. Okay, Maple Creek, western boundary, Mary Lake. And those of you that might be able to see that little red line, see that moving across yeah, it shows you where the earthquake's at. Maple Creek's got the better signature. Yeah, it looks like two earthquakes here. Let me pull that. Yeah, once again, volcanic tremors. And let's go back to the second one. Volcanic tremors. Not good. And you can see all of them marked in red here for Maple Creek. Yeah. Another one there. Well, there's a lot of them at the top here. We'll start with that one. Okay. And it might go small on me, huh? We got the... Let's go... Let's look at this first. Yeah. This is um, slow-moving tremors, constant tremors. Look at the heat coming up here. Again, this is Maple Creek. This is up by um, the Madison River area. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, let me just bring it over. Earthquake there. Some more there. You can see the heat coming up. Yep. Now remember too, uh, back when Obama was president, he created the gag order. So they are not allowed to talk about any of this activity that is going on at Yellowstone. And yeah, lots of popping. This is one of the larger ones. Look. Look at the seismic signature and see if we can see how big was that. Um, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, magnitude 1.43. Okay. And let's take a look at the seismic signature. Harmonic tremors. Yeah. 
Now, when they're marked in red, that went little on me, didn't it? Um, the computer figures it was in more close to within this location. Now, that's tectonic. And then we got another one. Yep, getting brittle. Getting brittle. Yep, harmonic. Let's take it though. Uh, close that because it'll go big. You won't be able to see it. Yep. And let's go down to what it was showing when I pulled the files a little while ago. Yep. So going to um, the maps that I put here on Google Earth. Up over here is Maple Creek. This is Hedgen Lake. And Mary Lake is down over here close to the western boundary. And then this one here is the Madison River location. Yeah, this is the area when it had its last major eruption. I'm not talking about the smaller eruptions. There's been over 40 smaller eruptions. But this is where it started. This is where they had the uplift. And it decided to do what's called an unzipping. It's where they have multiple eruptions doing a counterclockwise rotation. And when those eruptions got down here to Heart Lake, that's when the two resurgent domes collapsed. Now these smaller eruptions, some of them have been as recent as about 2,000 years ago. But they don't want to talk about that. They always talk about, oh, 350,000 years ago we had a super eruption. But yet the smaller eruptions could have been the same size as Mount St. Helens or maybe even larger. Well, they're still looking at the boardwalk. I was hoping they would zoom out because I want to talk about um, the trees that grew up during what's called the quiet time and how nowadays um, they're starting to die off. Well, the quiet time, what I'm talking about is when there wasn't gases coming up to kill the trees. So all these trees, oh, they moved it again, <laughs> grew up after an age where there was lots of gases coming up. There we go. You can see them there. And at the top, that whole line of trees that have died. So when there wasn't gases coming up, this is when all these trees grew. And it wasn't as long ago as you might think. Here we have Castle Geyser. Castle Geyser is only maybe eight to 10,000 years old. All these other geysers around it are only a little over a thousand years old. This is Castle Geyser. It looks like a castle. That's why they gave it the name of Castle Geyser. Let me exit Street View. Are you surprised? I'll give you a link to this page, but they did 3D laser mapping. Okay, and they decided, they came up with the age of these different geysers. Castle Geyser, it, they found out, showed three distinct stages of growth. And there was gaps between the growth. And they found that many geologic systems from volcanoes and geysers operate in the same pulse eruptions and pauses between eruptions. They even did carbon dating of the trees to find out when they grew up. This forest here only has grown up within the last 200 years and then the gases started coming up again, renewed activity, and now they're dying. When studying Old Faithful, they found out that Old Faithful had a period of inactivity which the forest grew these trees were killed by the reactivation of the hydrothermal activity. The younger activity was very different from the modern Old Faithful. He suggests that there may have been a pause before the current geyser activity began. The pause at Old Faithful also coincided with the pause at Castle Geyser. Trees at Castle Geyser also grew during a time of a pause in activity. It goes on to say that, for instance, current activity at Grand Geyser has killed mature trees on the hillside near the geyser. 
either grand had a pause in activity during which the trees grew, or it had much less vigorous activity for an extended period of time. I keep saying Yellowstone is recharging for another eruption. So going back to Google Earth, let's go to Grand Geyser. That's up over here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we got Grand, we got Castle, and we got Old Faithful. Photographs from 1878 show trees covered by silica on the upper terrace of the geyser. This tree, if souvenir seekers had not removed it, uh, would be completely covered with silica. The tree, if it grew in place, will date from the time of the pause at the activity of Castle Geyser. Yeah, this is part of their um, order not to talk about things that are happening. Yeah, and you can see here Maple Creek, Western Boundary, how all that activity, Mary Lake, has been increasing. And I've been talking about it. Yeah, look at the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. It's like, oh my goodness. And then over here would be um, West Thumb. They know what's going on. They just don't want people to know. Because actually, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you can be prepared. You can have... Uh, food, water, and evacuation plan, but if it did erupt there, there's no way for the people at the park to outrun or even outdrive a pyroclastic flow. Yeah, they would be all vaporized. So thank you very much for watching. I'll give you a link to that paper down below. It'd be in the more information box. Um, be prepared. You just don't know. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.